to The Road to 5G, brought to you by the Rogers Corporation. Today's topic, commonly overlooked issues critical for successful designs at millimeter wave frequencies. Hello, my name is John Coonrod with Rogers Corporation. I am a technical marketing manager, and this video is really going to be a question and answer session for some of the commonly overlooked issues for 5G. Does the woven glass that gets used in many high-frequency materials pose a problem in the electrical performance above 60 gigahertz? Right, yeah, the, the woven glass, and sometimes called the glass weave effect, can be an issue as you go to higher frequencies, basically because at 60 gigahertz or even higher, the wavelength is so small that it's more sensitive to any kind of anomalies for dielectric constant. In the case of glass weave, uh, woven glass fabric is often used in the manufacture of the laminate, and these gl woven glass fabrics actually have a weave pattern, of course. So you have glass bundles, and you have uh, knuckles of glass bundles, and you have spaces between the glass. And the difference is the glass itself has a dielectric constant of about 6, and the open areas between the glass is not a dielectric constant of 6. That open area is really based on whatever the resin system of the laminate is. So it's sometimes 2.5 or 3. So what you get in a very small area is an isolated difference, a dielectric constant in the open area compared to the glass bundles. And this can be problematic. Uh, the other problem with uh, glass weave effect is it's very difficult to characterize because it's kind of uh, a random um, issue of uh, a line in the circuit image to the pattern of the glass weave. And maybe to illustrate this a little better, let me show you a picture. I've given two pictures here. The picture on the left is really the uh, glass fabric that is shown that is used in the uh, support of uh, making a laminate. And what we've done was drawn a uh, conductor across the top of this glass fabric in two different locations. One conductor that's labeled as high DK, that is a line to the glass fabric where the conductor is going right across the top of the glass bundles. So that particular conductor is going to have a higher dielectric constant because it is a line directly on top of the glass. In the case of the conductor to the right of that, it says low decay, that conductor is aligned to the glass fabric to where it's going between uh, areas of openings in the glass bundle and glass bundles. So that low decay conductor is actually seeing a lower dielectric constant because that conductor actually has less glass beneath it. The difference between the high and low decay is really just how much glass is beneath the conductor. And then uh, another way to think about it is a picture on the right here where I'm showing a conductor on an angle compared to the uh, pattern of the glass weave. And you can see that uh, the anomaly to the dielectric constant being the dielectric constant of the glass as compared to the opening is a little different in this case. So on the bottom of the picture, the circle there is showing a high dielectric constant area. And what that is saying is really it is the conductor is going across several glass bundles and then it moves up into the center of the picture where there's a circle that says low decay and now the conductor is going across the area of the pattern of the glass weave whereas many openings so the lower dielectric constant now is in that area and then you go up further in the picture at the top there's a circle showing a conductor with even a larger area that's uh, over glass bundles as well so it's going to have a higher dielectric constant. So here you can see you go from high dielectric constant to low dielectric constant to high dielectric constant in a relatively small area and the problematic thing about this is they're not the same sizes. You can see that uh, just located, uh, just based on the location, you actually have a different area of the conductor being affected by low and high decay. There's another way to think about this as well, and that is in regards to wave velocity, or sometimes called as phase velocity or propagation delay. And uh, really what that is, is uh, whenever the medium for a wave is a higher dielectric constant, that will slow the wave down, so you will have a slower wave velocity. So in the case of the picture here that I'm showing, uh, the conductor to the left, where it's aligned to the glass fabric and has a higher dielectric constant, that will have a slower wave propagation than the conductor to the right that says low dielectric constant. Now where that comes into play is when you have parallel um, conductors that have timing issues where you're expected to pick up a signal at the end of the circuit and that signal should be arriving at the end of the circuit at the same time. And in this case that's not going to happen because one conductor has high decay, the other one has a lower decay, and that's going to make a difference in phase velocity, which means the signals are not going to arrive at the end of the circuit at the same time. And that issue is called skew, and skew can be an issue in RF applications, but it's usually more problematic in high-speed digital applications. Another way to think about the glass weave effect is wavelength. And uh, it's commonly known that a quarter wavelength or any anomaly for a circuit that is a quarter wavelength 
can cause an issue to the circuit performance. Now, a quarter wavelength at 60 gigahertz is pretty small, so when you get in the millimeter wave range of frequencies, these numbers are pretty small. Now, we have done studies and we have seen other studies where it's suggested, and we have data to show this, that even an eighth wavelength uh, anomaly in the dielectric constant can cause a difference in circuit performance. Now, some of these glass weaves that are used to support laminates, the openings between the glass bundles are definitely in that range of eighth wavelength at 60 gigahertz if you're assuming a laminate with a three dielectric constant. So assuming all that, uh, laminate three dielectric constant, the eighth wavelength at 60 gigahertz is about 15 mils, 0.015 inches. And there are many different types of glass fabric that actually has openings about that size, which means uh, it will be electrically noticeable to the circuit, and these openings can cause an issue um, for the circuit performance due to the glass weave. So yes, at 60 gigahertz, the glass weave effect can definitely be an issue, and that's one of the reasons that our Rogers RO3003 material is used at the millimeter wave frequencies, because it does not have glass reinforcement and there is no glass weave effect. Being that many 5G millimeter wave radios are being designed in a hybrid MLB package, what should designers take into consideration when selecting materials? Yeah, that's really a good question because as, uh, as the technology has evolved, uh, a lot of the millimeter wave applications now are using MLBs, multi-layer builds, multi-layer boards. And a lot of these multi-layer boards are not uh, um, the same material. It's actually a hybrid, so it's actually a mix of materials. And the mix of materials is usually done for a very good reason, and there could be several different reasons, which I'll talk about. Uh, but these hybrid multi-layer builds um, are definitely more common for the millimeter wave, and the way the technology is evolving, I'm assuming it's going to continue to do that. So knowing how these different materials behave is uh, something really good for the, uh, the designer to understand. The image shown in the picture here is actually a microsection, high magnification, of a multi-layer circuit that is actually used at 77 gigahertz. And the top portion, copper layer 1, copper layer 2, that substrate that's white, that is our Rogers RO3003 materials. And it is used at millimeter waves, sometimes 60 gigahertz and many times at 77 gigahertz. The rest of the material in the uh, stack up of the circuit is actually FR4, and it's not just any FR4. It's usually a very specific FR4 that is a high TG FR4. It's also very thermally robust to uh, withstand multiple lead-free soldering, has low CTE, so these attributes are uh, very much desired for a hybrid multi-layer build. There are several different reasons for the mix of material used in a multi-layer hybrid, and uh, here shown in the picture is one of them that's probably a little more common where uh, the circuit has several layers that need to be electrically uh, critical, where they are electrically critical, where the RF performance is very important. But other layers of the circuit could be control circuits and power planes where the electrical performance is really not that critical. And in that case, what they do many times is the layers that are critical to the RF performance are used in the high frequency uh, circuit materials, which are a little more costly. And then you could use an FR4 material that is a little bit uh, lower in cost for the other layers. Now, besides that, there's also um, another case to consider mixing materials, and that would be CTE, coefficient of thermal expansion. And in some cases, the materials that are very good for electrical performance, for good RF performance, they may not have a very good CTE, and you may mix other materials in the package, in the overall circuit stack up, that have very low CTE, so the overall circuit CTE is in the range of being very good, which makes for a good reliability of plated through hole. The cross-sectional view of the circuit shown here is another example of a hybrid using a mix of materials for a different reason. In this case, it's actually for thermal management reasons. And uh, in this case, the RF material that is used for the, uh, the, critically, uh, the layer of critical high performance may not have that good a thermal conductivity. And when that's true, you can use another material that is beneath there that could have very high thermal conductivity, and that will improve the heat flow path from the RF materials on the top layer down through the materials that have the high thermal conductivity into the heat sink below. So a mix of materials sometimes is done to improve the thermal conductivity of the overall circuit. Bottom line is that multi-layer hybrids are very common with 5G applications and it will continue to be that way. Uh, most of Rogers' materials are very friendly to combining with other materials in the industry. But to be on the safe side, it would be best to contact our Rogers TSE, that's our technical service engineers, and they can help you understand the, the different materials that should be used, and they can also help with the fabrication and questions regarding fabrication of a hybrid multilayer.
What are the pros and cons of using PTFE versus thermoset materials at frequencies above 15 gigahertz? Right, that's actually a pretty common question. Uh, where PTFE materials have been around a very long time, actually, and uh, they are used in a wide range of applications. Uh, thermal set materials, they've also been around a while as well, and they're usually used, uh, usually different, and there's reasons for that, and I'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, but as a general statement, PTFE materials are usually better for electrical performance, lower loss. Thermal set materials are usually, uh, they're usually pretty good for electrical performance as well, usually not quite as good as PTFE. But the thermal set materials have the advantage where they're a little bit more friendly to the circuit fabrication process. I've given several different bullet points here that uh, explain some of the, uh, the basic thought processes here. And the first one is the PTFE laminates typically have lower dissipation factor than thermal set laminates. And these are generalizations, of course, but that is a, a pretty good statement usually. PTFE laminates also can be supplied with rolled copper normally, and rolled copper is the smoothest copper available in the market right now, and smoother copper does several things. One is it reduces conductor losses, improving insertion loss, and also smoother copper can make the circuit behave more consistent for phase response. And then the thermal set materials, they normally can't be supplied with rolled copper, generally speaking. And uh, they can be supplied with a reverse treat copper, a reverse ED treated copper. And one example of that would be our Rogers RO4350B low pro or even the Rogers RO4835 low pro laminates. Uh, these are thermal set materials that are very friendly to the circuit fabrication process and with the smoother reverse treated ED copper uh, get very good uh, performance for conductor loss and have been used at millimeter wave frequencies. The PTFE based systems, uh, they also have an issue sometimes with circuit processing. It uh, depends on the, on the material and the circuit itself, but uh, there sometimes is a need to do special drilling parameters and special through hole preparation for PTFE based materials. Uh, most fabricators nowadays understand this quite well, but it can uh, cause the cost of the fabrication to go up a little bit. Uh, whereas the thermal set materials, they typically use processes that are much more standard and uh, they're a little bit more friendly to the PCB fabrication process. Another few quick comments. Uh, thermal set materials in general, and these are generalizations, uh, they're typically used at lower frequencies up to 20 gigahertz, sometimes 30 gigahertz. There are a few exceptions there. PTFE materials, they're used across a much wider range of frequencies, many times at low frequency, and they go easily up into the millimeter wave range of frequencies. Uh, there is an exception with some of the thermal set materials where Rogers has formulated some thermal set materials that are very good for high frequency performance, and they have been used and are being used at 60 gigahertz and even 77 gigahertz. So a lot of the, the comments I've made here are really generalizations, and to uh, get more details on this topic, it would be a, a very good idea to talk to one of our application development managers, and uh, they can give you a lot more details about the pros and cons of PTFE and when to use them and when to maybe use a thermal set. How does copper surface roughness impact insertion loss and design decay? Yeah, this is a subject that's a, a very large topic with a lot of information. And uh, to begin with, I'd like to recommend uh, going to our Rogers Technology Support Hub where there's a lot of information on this topic. Uh, today, though, I'll give you a quick overview of it. To begin with, copper surface roughness has a couple of effects. One is copper surface roughness will cause an effect on conductor losses. A rougher copper will cause more conductor losses, which actually increase insertion loss. Another aspect is the copper surface roughness has an impact on phase response of the circuit, and it does that by a rougher copper will slow the, the phase velocity of the wave, and a slower phase velocity will actually slow the wave down, which causes the circuit to report a higher dielectric constant. Even though the substrate's unchanged, just the copper surface alone can do that. Shown here is a cross-sectional view of a microstrip transmission line circuit, and uh, I've exaggerated the uh, surface that I'm talking about, and that is the interface between the substrate and the copper. That is the surface that I'm concerned about for copper surface roughness. Now, the tables of information are given here to give you a reference for uh, the frequency dependency of copper roughness on uh, the effect of uh, insertion loss and phase response. And what I mean by that is at a certain frequency where the skin depth is equal to the copper surface roughness, at that frequency is where the copper surface roughness will have a significant impact on insertion loss and also phase response. So you can see by the table of information here that this could occur at different frequencies based on the type of copper that you have and the surface roughness that that copper does have. 
In the chart shown here, I've done testing using 5 mm RL3003 laminate, and uh, this is using the exact same substrate to make two different laminates, one with rolled copper, one with ED copper. The rolled copper is very smooth, surface roughness of 0.3 microns RMS. The ED copper is much rougher at 1.8 microns RMS. And you can see there's a remarkable difference in the insertion loss curves. So at millimeter wave out at 60 gigahertz, there's a pretty big difference. At 80 gigahertz, also a big difference. And uh, one thing I'd like to remark about is the insertion loss uh, for the ED copper, the blue curve, even though that's much different and higher than the road copper curve, it's still in the range of being extremely low loss. So having an insertion loss of about 2 dB per inch at 80 gigahertz, that's considered very low loss and extremely good performance. The road copper at 80 gigahertz at 1 dB per inch is even better. That's extremely good. So even though you see a difference here, I do want to point out that these are both curves are in the range of uh, very low loss, very good performance. But it is obvious that the smoother copper has much lower insertion loss than the rougher copper. Now in this chart, I'm showing the DK behavior, DK on the y-axis, frequency on the x-axis. And again, it's of the same circuits I had just previously shown, and that was using 5 mil RL3003 microstrip transmission lines. In this case, I'm looking at microstrip differential phase length, so I'm looking at differences in regards to phase measurements and extracting the dielectric constant across a range of frequencies. So the smooth copper, the rolled copper, that's the orange curve, and you can see that that is reporting a dielectric constant of about 3.03 .03 out in the millimeter wave range of frequencies, 60 to 80 gigahertz. And uh, what's interesting about that is, is the intrinsic uh, dielectric constant of the material itself is 3.0. And with rolled copper, the circuits are reporting a value very close to the intrinsic dielectric constant of the raw material. And the reason is that rolled copper is so smooth that it's really not affecting the wave propagation much. It is just a little bit, and it raises the dielectric constant just a little. The green curve is the exact same material, same circuit design, same everything, except now it's using the rougher copper, the ED copper. And that roughened surface does slow the wave velocity, and it does make the dielectric constant increase. And at millimeter wave frequencies, around 60 to 80 gigahertz, we're getting a dielectric constant about 3.2 in that case. So it's obvious that a rougher copper surface does impact the insertion loss, and it does impact the phase response. So as I've shown in the graphs, uh, the copper surface roughness at 60 gigahertz is a real effect, and it really does need to be well understood. So copper surface roughness and its impact on insertion loss and also on phase response are very meaningful at millimeter wave, and these are issues that really need to be well understood. This concludes this session of the Road to 5G. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you're not already a member, join the Rogers Technical Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more Rogers Corporation informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Rog mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.